What's up everyone? Welcome back to the RA Visuals YouTube channel, where you'll always find high quality visuals and high quality tech. And today is no exception. I have a ton of tech to show you all because I'm going to take you through my entire dual PC gaming, editing, and streaming setup that I'm currently using because I know a bunch of you out there always have questions about what I use in my setup and how I utilize it. And now we're gonna jump straight into it right after a quick word from today's sponsor. Are you tired of that annoying Windows activation watermark on your desktop? VIP URCD Key has you covered with fully licensed codes to activate your favorite games and software. Purchasing your key is super easy. All you have to do is click on the item that you want, click buy to add it to your cart. Once in your cart, you can now enter my promo code RAV20. After adding the promo code, you'll see your savings pop up and you can then purchase your product with your chosen payment method. Finding and entering your Windows 10 CD key is super easy. All you have to do is go over to your user profile, find your purchase and click view keys and codes to reveal your new CD key. Then all you have to do is go to settings and windows, click on update and security, click on activation, and finally click on change product key and paste your new key into the window and click next. You'll now have a fully licensed version of Windows 10 with no watermark. Check the links in the description to start saving now. Okay, to start this off, the main reason I decided to move to a two PC setup is to maximize GPU performance and my frame rate while gaming and streaming at the same time. Is this absolutely necessary to stream you guys? No, not really. In fact, I've always been a single PC guy and I've managed to game and stream on the same PC for a few years thanks to Nvidia's NVENC technology, which allows you to use your GPU to do the stream encoding for you and game at the same time. The only issue here is that of course, with your GPU being used for both gaming and streaming, your frame rate takes a pretty huge hit. So recently I've gotten into some more GPU demanding games, so I figured why not give a two PC setup a try since I have the required hardware. Seems super simple, right? Well, it can actually get kind of complicated, but don't worry, I'm gonna take you through my whole setup and show you how I make it work. But also all the items I talk about in this video will be linked down below, so if you're interested, you guys can pick any of it up. Now, let's start with the PCs that I'm currently running. So the first PC in my setup should be familiar to some of you guys if you've been around the channel for a little bit. This is my editing and streaming PC. Now this actually used to be just my main everything PC and it used to be my workhorse and now it still is, but it's just a different purpose now. So this PC is currently rocking a Ryzen 9 3950X with an ASRock X570 Tai Chi motherboard, 64 gigs of Kings and Fury Renegade DDR4 memory with an EVGA RTX 2080. Okay, so I also added a uh, Sound Blaster AE5 Plus. I did a video on that a long time ago. This is a, uh, a sound card that I use uh, to actually listen to my stuff while I'm editing. And lastly, it has a very key component that makes it an effective streaming PC, and that is the addition of the Elgato 4K60 Mark II capture card. And I'll go into way more detail about this and why it's important to my setup here in just a bit. And now my second PC, you guessed it, that is my dedicated gaming PC. This thing is all business. It has a 12th gen Intel Core i7 12700K CPU, an MSI Z690 motherboard, 64 gigs of Kingston Fury DDR5 memory, and to top it off, a gigabyte RTX 3080 Ti, pulling in all those sweet frames in my games. So now that you guys know what hardware I'm running, let's talk about how I make these two PCs work together to send a video and audio signal to my streams, as well as any recordings I use on my channel. So we're gonna start off with the video side of things first, and then we'll move into how I make my audio work, as this is a super common question when it comes to two PC setups, because it can get a little bit complicated. And then after that, I'll explain some essential accessories that I use to make my streaming content creation a little bit easier. And to help me with explaining everything, I made a nice little graphic for you guys that I will constantly refer to during this video that shows how everything connects so you guys get a better visual of how it all works. So starting off with the streaming PC, this is where I run my streaming software of choice, OBS Studio, and is where I control the whole broadcast while I stream to YouTube and to Twitch. I have all of my streaming panels and alerts set up in this software and can change them around whenever I want. I have this PC connected to my secondary monitor via an HDMI cable to be able to glance over at chat and to check OBS to make sure everything's running smoothly. And now without going into a full breakdown of my stream settings, I stream using Nvidia's NVENC since I have the power of that RTX 2080 to do the encoding for me and I let my CPU handle all the rest of the backend stuff. Moving along, let's talk about how I capture my gameplay and send that video signal back to OBS so I can display it in the stream. To do this, I use the Elgato Game Capture 4K60 Mark II. 
Now, when I was on a single PC setup, I didn't need one of these capture cards because I was simply capturing the computer that I was already on via game capture and OBS. But now that I've moved to a two PC setup, a capture card like this is pretty much a necessity. Now, the reason I went with this particular card is because it has the ability to capture up to a 4K image at 60 Hertz, while many others just simply do 1080p, to be honest with you guys. So I game at 1440p, 165 Hertz, and this capture card sends that signal perfectly as well. After installing the card, I just needed to connect the included HDMI cable to an HDMI port on my RTX 3080 Ti for my gaming PC, and then plug that cable back into the in on the Elgato to send my video signal from my gaming PC over to my streaming PC. All I had to do then was just add Elgato as a source in OBS, and bam, I can now capture my gaming PC in all its glory, gaming whatever I wanna do. Okay, so now you guys know how I capture my gameplay, but what about this ugly mug right here? Now, face cams are a huge part of interacting with your audience on stream, so they're usually an essential part of a gaming and streaming setup like that. Now, of course, you can just go ahead and use a webcam if you want, but if you wanna take it to the next level, you wanna run a camera with an interchangeable lens. The camera I run is my old Sony a6000, which is a very good beginner camera that will accept interchangeable lenses and will shoot at 1080p 60fps, which is pretty much the standard everybody sets their face cams to. So I have it set on an articulating arm to get it in the correct position, and I run a dummy battery into the camera, which supplies a constant power supply to the camera, so I never have to worry about changing any batteries or them dying on me in the middle of a stream. It's super important. So now with all of that, the camera works, but how do I send this signal from the camera to the computer and then overlay it in my stream in OBS? To do this, I use a handy little piece of gear called the Elgato Cam Link. It's a simple USB device that allows you to connect a camera to your PC with a simple HDMI cable. My particular camera has a micro HDMI out on it, so I picked up a micro HDMI to full size HDMI cable off Amazon, connected it to the camera, and then connected it to the cam link, and then the cam link into the USB port on my streaming PC's motherboard. And then all I had to do after that was add the cam link as a video source in OBS, and bam, once again, I now have my camera displaying in my stream and I can do whatever I want with it. Now with any camera setup, you also need some good lighting so you can get a better quality picture. And I'm not gonna go into super huge detail about all the lights in my office because as you can see, I have a ton of them. Wow, 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 wow. But for streaming and recording content, I mount a single key light on top of an articulating arm that I also mount my camera to. The light that I use is a 14 inch round key light from GVM that comes with its own desk mount. Now honestly, the reason I can just use this one light is because this light in combination with the rest of the lights in my office helps create a certain look to my stream that I actually really enjoy and hopefully all of you do too. All right, now you know the video side of things, so let's move on to what is probably just as important or even more important, and that is audio. The way that I basically make all the sound on my stream work is by using the GoXLR Mini. This device allows me to separate my game audio, chat audio, music audio, and my own microphone and independently control them with their own little fader. So here's how I use the GoXLR Mini in my setup. I first connect the USB connection to my gaming PC and run the GoXLR app on that PC because I have multiple audio sources coming from that system that I need to pass back to my streaming PC and vice versa. To do this, I use two 3.5 millimeter aux cables and run them from the back of the GoXLR to the motherboard of my streaming PC. I plug one from the line out on the GoXLR to the line in on the motherboard, then one from the line in on the GoXLR to the line out on my streaming PC's motherboard. This allows me to pass all of the audio coming from my gaming PC, like my game, Discord, and music over to my streaming PC, and it allows me to pass the audio from my streaming PC, like my alerts and my mic audio to the GoXLR and have it all be heard inside of OBS by simply selecting line in as my only audio source. And if you're wondering what microphone I use, uh, I still use the Rode Pod mic that I've been using for over a year now, and I think it sounds fantastic, and it comes in at a really, really great price too. And the cool thing about the GoXLR is that it already has its own preamp inside of it, so it's able to boost the pod mic's audio and keep it sounding nice and crisp. Last thing here is I simply plug my headset into the headphone out on the front of the GoXLR, and that's it. All right guys, so that's basically everything I use to make my two PC setup work, other than a couple of accessories. Let me go ahead and show them to you. So first, and really second, I guess, of course, are a couple of good mice and keyboards. Now, I have quite the collection of both, 
So I swap those in and out of there all the time and change the look of my desk. But what I am doing is looking into grabbing a KVM switch that will hopefully allow me to only use one mouse and one keyboard to be able to control both PCs because it'll make it a lot easier for me. Another item I found was a huge help on the cable management side of things are a couple of USB 3.0 extension cables. I bought a box of like 10 of them from Amazon and these seriously saved me because of the weird cable routing I had to do to each of my PCs and how far away they are from certain things. And the last accessory I want to mention is my Elgato Stream Deck. Now this little piece of gear single-handedly makes running my stream so much easier because I can actually bind every one of my stream screen buttons and with a single hand switch to game view, chatting view, full screen view, you know, you guys get the idea. But you know, it has so many other functions too, like allowing me to start a recording at the touch of a button, open any app I wanna bind to it, and almost most importantly, control my Spotify music playlist with a bunch of media buttons and controls that I set on it as well. So this little guy has so many different functions that I can make you know, an entire video about it, but it basically just makes being a creator so much smoother. So it's something I highly suggest to somebody who takes streaming seriously. Now, you may be asking, do I need everything you listen in this video to make a two PC setup work? Short answer for you, no. There are a ton of different options you can go with to save money or even save room on how much stuff you have on your desk. So honestly guys, it'll depend on what you wanna do and how much budget you have. You can go as big or as small as you want. Uh, there's a bunch of ways of doing it. This is just how I do it. And speaking of budget, if you guys are wondering how much that entire setup cost that I just told you about, well, it's gonna hurt me to say it, but I will. But for everything, you know, the PCs, the monitors, camera setup, audio gear, and all the accessories, it's probably between eight and $10,000. Yeah, and I'm not even including all the cables, the custom desk I built, or any of all the decorations around it that makes it look cooler either. Needless to say, you guys, the sky's the limit when it comes to a streaming setup. And honestly, I did not make this video to just flaunt how much money I spent on mine and be like, oh my God, check out this crazy setup. But rather, I wanted to show you guys a high-end example of what you can do and simply show you how to get all of it to work. So hopefully I accomplished that today. And if I did, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below and make sure you guys ask any questions about anything I may have missed in the video. Also, don't forget to like the video and smash that subscribe button so we can take the channel to the stratosphere and let me be able to stream for you guys more. Uh, I know I haven't been able to be live in some time. I've been making videos and trying to you know, pay for everything, uh, but hopefully I can change that soon. But you know, the next time I stream, I hope to see you guys all there. But anyway, have an awesome day. I'll see you guys later. Happy streaming.